Hey, so welcome back. And what I want to do here is I want to take another look at the principle of virtual work for trusses. So this problem's a little bit more complicated because we have a few more loads. But what we're doing is we're going to be solving for this displacement, the horizontal displacement at joint C. And here, you know, we have more loads. We have a four kilonewton load, we have a six kilonewton load, twenty-four kilonewton load. I mean, to solve this this truss looks kind of intimidating. But what we're going to do is, you know, to uh, to apply this principle of virtual work, we're going to draw the structure with the unit load. And then we're going to solve it for the internal virtual forces. And, and I added this in from the last one. But basically, what we want to do is identify all the zero force members, because that's going to help us out a lot and simplify the calculations in terms of what we need to actually figure out. All right, so here, you know, after that, we're going to apply the principle of virtual work equation. Hey, so let's get started. So first, let's just copy this structure down. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to delete all of the forces and basically replace them with our unit force. So let's do that. Okay, so here's the structure copied down. And what we're going to do is we're just going to delete all the forces, every single force on that structure. And all that we're going to put back on is a one unit load where we want the displacement. So in this case, we want the displacement at joint C. So we're going to put a one kilonewton force at joint C. And, and since we want it, the horizontal displacement, we're going to put it in the horizontal direction. If you had a vertical displacement, you'd put it in the vertical direction, right? But in this case, we're going to use the horizontal direction. So next thing that we want to do is, you know, we want to go ahead and we want to solve for the trust, the, the internal virtual forces, little n. And I added this in again, it's, I, we want to identify the zero force members. And maybe you can see it already, maybe you can't. But um, let's go down, we'll just look at joint C. Okay, so we're going to use the method of joints here, just look at joint C. We're not even going to touch the reactions here. Okay, but let's, let's go ahead and look at joint C. So we'll draw a free body diagram. And what that free body diagram looks like is basically a, it's just a dot, you know, so it's a joint. And what we're going to do is we're going to have our one kilonewton force here. And, you know, we're going to have some force in BC. And then we're going to have some force in CD. Right, and anytime I get a force at an angle like that, especially in a truss, I like to identify the components because I know in a truss these components are going to line right up with the axis geometry. Right, it's a, a two force member, and basically we have one force at one end, one force at the other end, and they have to be lined up with the member of the truss. So I'm going to call this one, you know, CDY, this one CDX. Okay. It, and basically, when we look at this, what you'll notice here is that when we sum the forces in the y direction, what we have is CDY equals zero, and that's pretty that's pretty uh, <laughs> important because when CDY equals zero, that means that CDX also equals zero. Okay, so right away we know that this is a zero force member. Okay, and that's nice because it means that it's not going to play in when we do any of the other calculations. Uh, maybe you know this as well, but uh, you know this force here. We can think of joint B, and, and I'll just draw this out. But let's let's look at joint B here, and maybe you know this already. But if you know, maybe um, you can see it. But if we look at the free body diagram of joint B, right? We can say, well, what do we know? We know that. We have some force here, which is BC. We have some force here, which is uh, AB, right? And potentially some force here, which is BD. And maybe you see this as well. But again, when we sum forces in the y direction, right? What do we know? Well, we see that you know minus BD has to equal zero. So there's another zero force member. So now we're adding to the list, okay? And if we go through joint by joint, um, what you're gonna end up with is essentially all of the members except for the top chord are going to be zero force members. Okay, so um, everything becomes a zero force member except for you know this this um, this top chord okay so that's a pretty important finding because what it means is that when we come back here really all we're need, needing to solve for is BC and AB right and when we do that let's look and we see some of the forces in the X direction hopefully this one's pretty obvious you don't need a calculator for this one but minus BC plus one kilonewton equals zero BC equals one kilonewton. Okay, and likewise, again, if we're looking at joint B, we can do the same thing. Some of the force in the x direction equals zero, and we can say, well, minus AB plus BC has to equal zero, so AB equals 
one kilonewton. Okay, so that's pretty good. We have little n, right? We have AB and BC. What it also tells us is basically when we go back and now solve for the real forces n, the only two members that we care about are going to be AB and BC. Okay, so that's pretty, that, that makes our life a lot easier. So let's do that. So what we're gonna do is just gonna kind of repeat this process now, and we're gonna look at, you know, the FBD adjoint C with the real loads now. So let's go look at the, the real loads. So what we'll do is we'll do our, you know, the, if this one was for little n, right, let's do our FBD at joint C. Now, and what we're gonna look at here is you know, big N, the real forces. Okay, so let's do that. So let's, so now we have, you know, joint C, and we know now instead of having one kilonewton, what we're gonna have is, you know, six kilonewtons pulling down and 24 kilonewtons pulling to the right. Okay, so that's where we start. We also have, you know, BC pulling to the left, and we're gonna have you know, some CD force here in compression. Okay, so when we have that, let's draw our components in. And those components are CDX, CDY. Okay, so this one's a little bit more complicated, you know, not crazy more complicated, but a little bit, right? And what we have is we know that the sum of the forces in the y direction is still s equals zero, right? And, but now we have, you know, CDY, and we have to add in the minus six kilonewtons. A little bit more challenging, but I think you can do this one even in your head. All right, so CDY is six kilonewtons, so that's good. The CDX is a little bit more challenging, but we have to look at the member geometry. And if we remember, uh, the member geometry looks a little bit you know, like a triangle where um, that triangle it has dimensions of three meters on the top and 1.25 meters on the side, you know, and what that means is now we can relate those to our forces or our force geometry. So this force, if this force is CD, we also are gonna have, you know, CDY and CDX. And what we can do is because it's a two force member, because it's a truss member, we can relate these. We can say, well, you know, three meters over 1.25 meters has to equal CDX over CDY, right? And from that, we can now go and solve and say, well, CDX has to equal uh, essentially three over 1.25 times six. And when we do that math out, we get 14.4 kilonewtons. Okay, so once we have that, we can come back and we can do our sum of the forces in the x direction equation. And you know, this shouldn't be too, too crazy for you, but minus BC, you know, plus CDX, plus 24 kilonewtons equals zero. And, and what we get here is we get BC has to equal uh, 38.4 kilonewtons. So we'll box that in and we know that it's in tension. And what this does is it allows us to now go ahead, you know, and we can look at joint, you know, joint B here as well. But from the first time we did this, there are no other forces here. We know that AB has to equal BC. So we know that, you know, likewise, AB has to equal uh, 38.4 kilonewtons also. Okay, you know, and in this we can kind of get from, you know, from the equation above because our free body diagram did not change. Okay, so this is pretty good. So what we've done so far now is we drew the structure, we solved for the internal virtual forces, and hopefully you can see by now why we identified those zero force members because it makes our life a lot easier, right? We did that and we solve for the, vir the, the real forces N and now we need to come back and apply uh, the principle of virtual work equation. And then equation looks like this. We're gonna have one kilonewton times delta equals the sum of little n times big N times L and I'm gonna put the AE out because uh, that is a constant for, our, for this, this equation. So next thing I like to do is I like to draw a little table. So what do we have? We have N n l n n l okay so this is our table we know that n is going to be in kilonewtons length is going to be in meters and then we're going to get some you know something over here which is going to be kilonewtons squared times meters okay so our members that we're going to put in are a b 
and B, C. Those are the only two members. We know the little n is one for both of them. We know the big N is 38.4 for both of them. And we know the length is 1.5 you know, for both of them. And when we multiply that out, n times n times L is 57.6 for both of them. So when we sum all that up, we get 115 0.2 kN squared meters. Okay, so we can take that, we can come back to our equation here. We can say that one kilonewton times delta equals, uh, you know, 115.2 kilonewton squared meters divided by our area of all the members that was given in the problem statement, uh, 2,500 millimeters squared. Uh, and then we have 200 thousand, I'm going to write it in MPA, we're going to in GPA, but I'm just going to make a, a, the conversion on the fly there. All right, and so again, there's a thousand MPA and a GPA. So now we need to convert and we can see that one of the kilonewtons crosses out. We need to multiply by 1000 newtons per kilonewton and also we need to multiply by 1000 millimeters per meter. We end up with delta equals zero point 23046, right? So, you know, let's say, let's just say 0 0.23 millimeters. And what we know is that's going to be in the horizontal direction. Okay. So there, there it is, you know, the, the beauty of this problem, right, is that it really simplifies down in this table because of the zero force members. Okay. And, and you might be saying, well, that's great, but on my homework assignment or on the FE or somewhere along the way, you know, maybe I have more forces instead of just a zero force member here, right? Well, if you were doing a vertical displacement, you know, you, you might end up with some additional uh, force in this member and, and really it would just be two forces the internal members here would still be zero force okay so even that type of problem would be a little bit more complicated but still doable so again what you're doing is you're drawing the structure you're solving it for the internal virtual forces little n you're looking for those zero force members to simplify how much you have to do you're solving for the real forces you're applying the principle uh, of virtual work equation and making sure you get those unit conversions right Hey, so I hope this helps you. And, uh, you know, if you have questions, feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, keep working hard. Until next time, keep moving onward and upward.